We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for October 27th, 2013. And today, kind of our normal mixture of different current events pertaining to the day and times we're living in. Um, try to reconcile a lot of what we're talking about biblically. And um, really tough for me to do dedicated teachings at this point with so many breaking current events going on. Um, so we're going to be looking at a number of different really important topics today that um, could definitely impact us all. Uh, very per- Potentially very pertinent to our um, everyday lives. So before we get into that, just some Bible verses. Titus 3, verses 4 through 8, which reads, But after that the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. And that's what separates most people that call themselves Christians from most true Christians. Yes, works will follow, no doubt, um, once you're saved, but we don't, we're don't. we not saved by works of righteousness, which we have done, which unfortunately most pseudo-lukewarm, quote, Christian denominational religions is pretty much what they teach or believe, uh, saved through works. He saved us according to his mercy. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, that's we're justified through his blood, by his grace, you're saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes, works will follow, and I can show you my faith by my works, I'm not denying that, but it's not what saves us. You, you just don't want to put the cart before the horse. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's of an eternal significance. That's really the difference between heaven and hell. You know, if you believe your works are saving you, you're not saved. So that's the thing. It's very important you get that right. Now, I've done a whole teaching on salvation and then the things like baptism and things like overcoming and bearing the cross of Christ. If you go up to contendingfortruth.com and you click on the True Salvation tab and listen to those audios in that order, that'll kind of walk you through that. So, uh, that's the most important thing that this ministry does. A lot of people have gotten saved, praise the Lord, I'm not saying it's because of me, um, because only the Holy Spirit can draw you. The Bible's really clear in that. You're only going to get saved if the Holy Spirit's drawing you. If the Holy Spirit's not there to draw you, you're not going to get saved. So, that's why it's important, you know, behold, now is the day of salvation, where it talks about that, and the Spirit of, of God will not always strive with man forever, these types of things. We, we don't want to keep putting it off. Because you may find a day comes you can't get saved. It's impossible. There's been people on their deathbed, this is a proven fact, that literally were there dying, lived a wicked life, had tons of chances to get saved, this happens a lot more in the past because they didn't have all the drugs where they could drug you up and, you know, uh, zonk you out to the point where you're like a vegetable at the end. I'm not saying that, that you know what I mean, I understand some, my mom was a great example of that at the end, but I had already led her to the Lord. There was no way you could have communicated with her at the end of end-stage cancer. I mean, other than the few cues I got from her as she was passing away that day. But I'm talking about before before the modern day advent of, of drugs, there was people that literally, they had umpteen chances to get saved. They put it off, put it off, put it off. And then it ends up happening where, like, the preacher comes, they're on their deathbed, and it's like they want to get saved, but they can't. They would even say such things. But they, they couldn't. It's like, I can't do it. They would tell the preacher, I just can't do it. I, I, I It's not in me. The Holy Spirit was not there to draw them. So it's very important, you don't mess around with that issue. (laughs) That is one issue you don't want to mess around with. You know? So, I just want to throw that in there. Um, 
that being justified by His grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I, I will that thou affirm constantly. So these are, these, are, these are good things to dwell on, to remember this. You know, these verses. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. And we're justified through his grace, through his shed blood. And that we're made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. And to maintain your testimony. And good works. Which is, which is good and profitable unto men. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and get right into the study here. And the first... I'm going to be playing a lot of clips today, audio clips. Not Most of them aren't very long, um, but more and more I like to play these audio clips because you're seeing that these are actually mainstream. A lot of these are mainstream news reports where they're admitting to this stuff, you know. And that maybe even though it wasn't on the 7 o'clock news or whatever it is, maybe it was, you know reported on a blip on CNN or Fox or whatever, they did report it. And these things are out there and you can verify them. So, this is, first one is America, DHS is preparing for possible riots and martial law on November 1st over the food stamp issue. This is a Fox video and news update. DHS is spending $80 million, Department of Homeland Security, Satan essentially, they're spending $80 million on armed guards to protect from American citizens because on November 1st, 2013, the food stamp program is set to start decreasing the amount that is allocated to food stamp recipients. This isn't a rumor. This is, this is happening. As a result, they are worried violence will ensue. They are preparing for the worst. Okay, so the first video, I think it's from Cavuto, some dude named Cavuto. On Fox News, you're going to hear you're going to hear him talking. It's pretty much self-explanatory here. I'm going to go ahead and play this video. Well, could this happen here on November 1st? The Department of Homeland Security says yes, it can. It's spending 80 million bucks to batten cities down. You won't believe why, though. Like Greece. So, 80 million dollars to batten cities down, starting November 1st. Okay, that's pretty significant. And again, I really believe a lot of this are trial runs. Just like that EBT card supposed glitch where they did it both ways. They did it where people couldn't use their EBT cards to see what the reaction would be, and which was pretty bad. And then they, they did it where in Louisiana, I think in a couple other places too, they where the cards said no limit to see what would happen. And... People were absolutely filling their carts to the absolute brim. They were just basically, it was just stealing, is what it boiled down to. And and now we're actually literally going to cut, I believe, by $36 for a family of four is what I think the thing is. Off, now, that doesn't sound like a lot to most of, but they the point they brought up is that if you're on the razor's edge, that $36 could mean make a big deal. You know, it, it might mean the difference between whatever. And so I, I don't know how people are going to react. Um, what if they couldn't use them at all, though? What if there were some type of, I don't know, pandemic, cataclysmic event, World War Three, who knows, where you couldn't use them at all? Or a solar flare or a... EMP attack where everything goes down, the electronics and everything is controlled through electronics. I believe with those EBT cards, and now, now you can't use them at all. And um, what if that happens? Then it's a whole other different scenario. November 1st could be a very, very, uh, well, 
iffy kind of a day. And I'm not just talking about what many in the uh, Catholic Church view as All Saints Day. This could be all hell breaks loose day. The Department of Homeland Security is spending $80 million on a raft of armed guards to protect the IRS and other government buildings in New York. Not from terrorist threats, mind you, but from American citizens. Because on November 1st, uh, the food stamp program is set to start decreasing the amount that is allocated to food stamp recipients. Not all, but a good many, and they're worried that violence will ensue. Tea Party.net chief strategist Niger Innes says, like Greece, violence is a serious concern when entitlements are threatened. And Niger, I guess they're preparing for the worst, should they be? Well, this is, this is really frightening. I mean, we are on a slow march to becoming Greece. You know, what this says more than anything is that when you have fit, nearly 50 million Americans on food stamps that are forced to be on food stamps because of a miserable economy uh, that big government is strangling, uh, then you have a situation where it's obvious what government can give to you. Now, listen. I understand there are legitimate reasons people can be on food stamps. I'm not. But he's act, the, the statement that he made there is almost like they're all on it because there's no jobs. A ton of people, there's videos up there bragging about this, play the system. This is all they've ever known is entitlement. They've just had it given to them. It's entitlement. And I, I don't know if he's the one that brings this up. He might bring it up a little bit later because I'm, I'm playing so many clips. But... The whole thing of where, okay, if you go to a, a public uh, national park, okay, and they say, okay, don't feed the whatever, the bears, the raccoons, the animals, whatever. The reason they're telling you that is not only because, yes, it can be dangerous for your own life, but also they do not want the bears, the raccoons, or whatever the animals to become dependent upon humans. When that happens, they forget what they're supposed to be doing, supposed to be doing, which is going out in, in, in getting the food the way that God programmed them to get food. They become lazy. They become, and again, I'm not making a blanket statement about every single person on food stamps. I understand there's, there's valid reasons. But I'm saying for people that believe they're entitled to this and that this is just the way it is and not, then all of a sudden you take that away and then it's like, whoa, no, 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 no. I've never been hungry. Now, all of a sudden, I'm hungry. I'm entitled to this. I've been entitled to it my whole life. And now, I'm going to get medieval to get food or do whatever. This is what I'm talking about. Our government has created this on purpose. This gigantic swath of the population. That for the most part, I'm not saying all, but for the most part, I would believe the vast majority of these that are dependent on the government... They're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. Whatever the government tells them to do, they're going to do. And the government is going to probably, there's going to come a time when the government takes this away to get their attention. And then they're going to realize, wow, I've never realized, uh, uh, realized what, it, what it is to actually fast. I've never really known what it is to be hungry. Maybe some of them have. Okay. And I'm sure some of them have. But a lot of them haven't. A lot of them, this is all they've ever known. Those same people are going to rob Peter to pay Paul. They're going to sell their soul, whatever they got to do, most of them, in order to get what they need to get to survive. And the government has created this. It would be like having a national park where all the animals are totally dependent upon them being fed by the... the um, the people there, let's just say the park rangers, they're totally dependent. They've totally left any type of natural behavior. They're just, to and, and then you take that away. What are the animals going to do? They're going to get very aggressive. They're going to come to those same, and again, this is why they've got these, um, this $80 million in Homeland Security or whatever to protect all of these governmental buildings on the first. And we're only talking a small decrease here. Okay, so it could get a lot worse. Obviously, if you if there was a percentage, a much bigger percentage of the cut in the EBT cards, and I mean, there's a ton of other programs, governmental programs out there, people are dependent on as well. Government can take away. Or, but you know what's odd about this, Andrews? No one is having anything taken away at this point. Some might see. 
the allocation of their food stamps, rearrange, reprioritize, reduce very slightly, but not, nothing at this point that just strips the stamps from them. So let's say uh, uh, I don't know how it works. If I have uh, $75 worth of food stamps and I have $70, let's say, uh, they are expecting riots over that. Should they be? Well, you know, I, I don't know that they should expect riots uh, uh, this cycle. But if we do not radically change our economy and revamp our economy so that those 50 million people, nearly 50 million people, are, have an opportunity to be liberated from food stamps, forget 75 versus $70 versus $65. Right. What these people need is economic opportunity and a good job so they can put, put food on their own table. You know, Neil, the slaves had food stamps. But... If you let somebody get away with something for long enough, and I'm not talking about the exceptions where these are valid reasons and they they have to be on them, okay, fine. I'm talking about the others. They've been on it so long, it's all they've ever known. Then all of a sudden, you give them a job. Let's just say, best case scenario, you give them one. They're not going to want to work. They've had it for this way so long, they're ruined. Okay, not all, but a lot. They're not going to want that. They're going to want all free. They're going to want every. So it's with the illegal, with the illegal aliens. That's what they do to them. Come over here. They come from abject poverty. You give them everything, and they start expecting it. And this is what we deserve. You gringos stole our country. Now you, we deserve all of this stuff. We deserve free health care. We deserve all of this governmental subsidized housing. I've covered all this in previous things. We deserve this. This type of we we can go out and get drunk, um, um, we can drive around without licenses. We get let go. It's fine. We deserve it. You agree? and and we don't have to pay taxes or, or IRS taxes. I should say that's a whole other thing with them. How how they they don't have to pay that at all. They're, they're coming. They're trying to destroy the working middle class of America, and they're giving all of these entitlements to illegal aliens and and other uh, groups out there that are dependent on the system, and this is what Satan wants to create, a a system where everybody is dependent upon him. Because ultimately, that's what you're dependent on, if you're depending on the government. Okay? I understand there's exceptions. I understand that I'm not trying to demonize everybody that that have ever been on these things, or, or may be right now, but I would pray, if I was you, to for God to open another door for you to get off this, because eventually, in order to get a benefit from Satan, it is going to keep costing you more and more and more. And where there seems to be no way, God can make a way. Call upon me, me, and I will show thee, and and um, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I am the God, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Okay, the Bible's very clear, and that's Isaiah thirty three and thirty two verses in there. So, you just have the you have to have the faith to believe that God can do that. Okay, if you don't have enough faith, read the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, this is how you acquire faith. Every man is appointed, the Bible says, a measure of faith. So not everybody has the same amount of faith as the next person. Does it make you better if you have more faith than the next person? Everybody's appointed a measure. But we can call upon God and ask for more faith. Okay, the Bible's clear on that. But do that in faith. I'm just saying, there's going to come a point where, just like I've said about the 501c3 churches, not to say everybody in that system's bad, but... There's going to come a point where you're going to have to get off that satanic train. It is satanic. It will be yoked up with the one world religion under the false prophet and antichrist. The 501c3 corporate church will be assimilated into that system and is being assimilated into that system. You're dependent on the government in any way, shape, or form. That system is going, to, is going to require more and more and more and more of you in order to be in that system. And eventually, you're going to have to make a choice. I, I just believe that's coming. Satan is not going to make it comfortable, particularly for Christians. So the more you're divested of that now, the better. Again, I don't have all the answers. Pray and fast about it is the best thing I can tell you to do. Get in the Word of God, pray and fast about it. 
I don't have all the answers, but I believe I'm giving you solid advice in what I'm saying in, in, in the long run. Um, because obviously we know the system where it's moving, and it's not moving toward a good place. It's moving to Antichrist, false prophet, one world government rule. So, let's go further. Sue, it was called Scraps from Mass's Table. And we have a crisis within our country right now when you have the 50 million people, nearly the entire West Coast, three states on the West Coast of the United States, on food stamps. That, that is, that's the real outrage. And that's to the say, real crisis. Well, to say nothing of about 100 million Americans who get some sort of food assistance. Now, I'm not begrudging the fact that genuinely, there are some who genuinely need that help, and, and we should help them. But it's gotten so out of control now that if, you, if, 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 if it keeps going at this pace, of course, everyone will be on it. But that begs the next question, whether uh, we become such an entitlement society and, and, and such an entitlement expected society that when they're even slightly curbed, uh, well, we heard it from Richard Trunk at the FLCIO with, when it comes to addressing even the growth of entitlements. They'll be held to pay on any Democrat who dare tries. So it doesn't look like we'll ever get out of this. And, and, and we have to get out of this. I mean, we are on a, a slow march to being Western Europe, uh, a socialized Western Europe, big government state where people uh, have not only uh, not only on entitlements, but have an entitlement mentality. And I'm not blaming the people that want these entitlements or in many cases might even be addicted to, to these entitlements. I'm saying they are victims and need to be liberated. Look, most of these folk, folk that I talk to... Okay, so this guy talking is a black man, a very well-spoken black man speaking on this subject. His name's Niger Innes. He's a TeaParty.net chief strategist. The guy's very intelligent. He's speaking the truth. And and um, I appreciate his, his, his perspective on... And really what you're hearing here is a lot of a lot of truth, even though it's coming out of Fox News, they're making up and they're bringing a lot of good points up here. Every day, they don't want to be on welfare. They don't want to be. They don't want to be forced to be in a predicament where they have to use food stamps or food assistance. They want a good job. So we need to liberate. But unfortunately, we know that's not going to happen. Uh, particularly, Obama started before with Bush, and it's been going on for decades. They've been shipping the jobs overseas. They've been shipping, you know, you know, jobs to India, jobs to China. They've been moving uh, all these corporations overseas. About everything that you buy in the stores is from China. It's all been done by design. Uh, all of this. It's all been done on purpose to create this. And I mean, they're talking about we need to reverse it. It's not going to happen. It will not happen. America is one of the last domino pieces that has to fall in order for the New World Order to come into total power and in order for the Antichrist and False Prophet to make their big appearance. So, again, this is just all part of this. So, while I I like their attitudes, it's not going to happen. From a biblical standpoint, it's not going to happen. I mean, Revelation, going into Revelation, it's not going to be, you know, pretty. And in coming up to World War III and these types of things. So, while I would love to believe or, or love to think that this could happen, obviously it's not. And their agenda has gotten so much more aggressive since Obama came into office uh, regarding just total destruction of this country that I don't see how there's any um, doubt in, in um, these points that I just brought up. So, let's go further this economy so that we can revive this economy to provide jobs, you know, take the boot off the private sector so that the private sector can do what it does best, which is create economic opportunity, not just jobs, but economic opportunity for people that might want to be entrepreneurs and provide jobs. Yeah, you got it. You got to give people that opportunity without you know, indenturing them to these programs. Nigel, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Neil. Very good interview. Um, and so we're, we'll see here. This is the 27th. I'm going to try to get this teaching up. So we've only got you know a very short time period until November 1st. Now, if there literally was riots over this, over what, let's say, 37% reduction, what does that tell us? If they're gearing up $80 million in armed guards in front of these governmental buildings nationwide, if there was riots over a tiny drop 
in the EBT cards. Now, I'm not saying it's not significant for a lot of people. Okay, but we're talking a fraction here of what they would normally have access to. Wow, does that tell us we are in serious trouble or what? So I'm, I'm, you know, to pray about it in, 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 you know, it's about the same time as we've had all of this mass witchcraft, which we were just praying about before the, this teaching started, about God stopping the human sacrifices and the, and the, and the animal sacrifices that are scheduled for good old Halloween, Satan's birthday, Samhain is how the occultists call it. Um, and, you know, so many churches celebrating that as well. I just can't get enough of that. Uh, if you want to know more about Halloween, key in Halloween in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com, just the word Halloween, look at its origin, see what it's really all about. It's it's one of the highest satanic holidays, probably is the highest satanic holiday. It's the most overt satanic holiday, by far. And um, all of that negative energy, all of that focusing on evil, all of the witchcraft that will take place, even in the days leading up to Halloween, there's sacrificial victims, um, being sacrificed even leading up to October 31st. Um, we need to be praying against that. Praying that the Lord dispatches holy angels to stop these things. Um, you know, just for the Lord to defeat this. Put on the full armor of God. Pray Psalm 64 because Psalm 64 and just key in the word Psalm in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. You'll read that. By an imprecatory prayers, that has to do with protecting you. Because, think about it. If you're praying about this, and you're not praying for God's protection of you, then you become the target for Satan. Now, I'm not saying you wouldn't be a target, because I'm not saying Satan doesn't know about Christians. Obviously, he does. But you're asking God in Psalm 64 for him to protect you from the workers of iniquity. And then you ask God to judge that wickedness. And... um with you praying in that way, you're appropriating protection for yourself and your family, and you're also asking God to judge the wicked, and to judge wickedness, that all men would see and fear and declare the work of God, that they would wisely consider his doing, and that the righteous would be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart would glory. You're not doing it because you want vengeance, you're doing it because ultimately you want to see people get saved, and you do not want wickedness to prosper. So, um, that's something that's, that's important to do. Um, particularly leading up to this time. And uh, let's go ahead and continue with this study. And the next report is entitled, Fort Hood Soldiers Told That Christians, Tea Partiers, Are a Radical Terror Threat. Fort Hood. During a pre-deployment briefing, Fort Hood soldiers were told that Christians, Tea Party supporters, and the anti-abortion activists were, radical, were a radical terror threat enemies of America, and that anyone found to be supporting these groups, Christians, Tea Party supporters, and anti-abortion, anyone found supporting these groups would be subject to discipline under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Let that one sink in. That's the explosive claim from a soldier who attended the half-hour briefing, which took place on October 17th of this year, and was devoted to how so-called radical groups, quote radical groups, were tearing, quote, tearing the country apart. That's, that's you and me. We're, we're responsible for all the evil in this country, evidently. Okay? The soldier told Fox News, adding that the threat, this was told by, to Fox News. I mean, this isn't something that... that you know, was some whatever. This is verified, and this has been happening all over this country. And we're going to get into some other examples of this. This isn't one isolated incident here. Adding that the threat of Islamic terrorism was barely even mentioned. No, they don't. They don't even mention that. No, the, the Islam is good. You know, it's us terrible Christians, people that will support the Tea Party. Pro-life, anti-homosexual, if that was, that's, that's a big one. We're the true source of all evil. And the Bible says, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. And this is, again, I've said this many times, but this is becoming more and more the norm. That's just the norm now. If it's evil, 
Obama's going to support it. He's going to protect it. He's going to glorify it. He's going to say how wonderful it is. If it's good, they're going to say, oh, it's evil. And, and how dare you support such a thing. This is becoming the new normal. Despite the fact that another soldier confirmed that threats of punishment were made during the meeting, an official Fort Hood representative denied the allegations. Well, of course they're going to deny them. He goes on to say, I was very shocked and couldn't believe what I was hearing, the soldier said. He said, quote, I felt like my religious liberties that I risked my life and sacrificed time away from my family and fight for were being taken away. According to the soldiers, the counterintelligence agent who conducted the briefing also said that Christians who protest against abortion were planning to bomb family planning clinics, meaning abortion clinics, and that pr the pro-life movement was an example of this, quote, radicalization. Are you stinking kidding me? This is what they're teaching. The soldiers are trying to. Pro-lifers bombing Abortion clinics? Meanwhile, we've literally got Islamic terror cell groups that I just documented in a recent teaching. Verified, they know the locations. Of course, I'm sure there's a lot of locations they don't know. Where they're literally training on our soil. They have whole compounds. The cops are even afraid to go there. And they're training to kill us and wage jihad, which is Islamic holy war, against the infidels, which are just non-believers of Islam. What does the Quran say? Kill, steal, behead the infidels. Annihilate them. Rape them. They're, they're worse than, than scum. They need to be annihilated off the planet. The Quran's very clear in that. I've given you their, their Quranic verses where it says that. Oh, but that's not, a, that's not anything we need to worry about or anything. No. Just let them come one, come all. Meanwhile, they've opened up the border totally down there now where all the illegal aliens can come. And a lot of the Islamic terror um, cells and, and, and people that have been trained for this, come up through Central America, through Mexico, and it's a proven fact they come up through the borders there, and then they relocate to wherever these Islamic terror cells are, and they've got this, this, this army just waiting to be activated for the green light. It's been going on for years. Literally, way over a decade. Probably at least two decades, if not more. But, we don't need to worry about that. It's, it's fine. This goes on to say the American public should be outraged that the, that the U.S. Army is teaching our troops that evangelical Christians and Tea Party members are enemies of America and that they can be punished for supporting or for participating in those groups. Now it's that you're going to be punished. If we find out you're part of them. They're trying to weed out anybody good in the military. Anybody in... They're, they're going to try to do that with everything. Police, sheriff... Everything, ultimately, they would try to... And this is why all these generals just got fired. I'm convinced of that. That we just documented the last teaching. They trump up some charge. He was using illegal poker chips. Meanwhile, Obama's a rabid uh, 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 homosexual that's killed all of his gay lovers. Proven. I mean, there's all kind of eyewitnesses to these things. He's committed more atrocities since he's been in office than probably all the other presidents ever combined. And that might be a little much, but it's, you know, it's pretty bad. Okay, the atrocities this dude's committed. And he's, he's given a free pass. That's fine. You do whatever you want to. You serve, you've served Satan well, so we will reward you. But if you use illegal poker chips that we're going to trump up some charge, you're out of here, Mr. General. It, it's just unbelievable. The Liberty Institute attorney Mike Barry told Fox News, quote, these statements about evangelicals being domestic enemies are a serious charge. Our community is still here healing. And this is what's so ironic about this report. This was said at Fort Hood. Okay. This Mike Barry um, attorney of the Liberty Institute said, our community is still healing from the act of terrorism brought on by Muslim jihadist Nadal Hassan, who really is a terrorist. Okay, the unnamed soldier added. And he's the one that, that killed all those people at, the, at Fort Hood on the military base, totally innocent, and, and, and annihilated all these people, killed them in cold blood for no reason other than he was waging jihad or Islamic holy war. And they have the audacity at Fort Hood to turn around and not even mention the Muslims, 
but to say, no, the real threat are all these terrible Christians and Tea Party and pro-lifers that are the real threat. It's just, it's so insane. It's almost like, it's like, is this a joke or something? Is this some kind of really sick joke? No, this is the new normal, unfortunately. The the unnamed soldier also said this is a slap in the face. The military is supposed to defend freedom and to classify the vast majority of military that claim to be Christians as terrorists is sick. Yeah, amen. This is by no means the first time the U.S. Army's top brass, as well as sectors of the federal government, have identified Christians and other conservatives as terrorists. Earlier this month, it emerged that several dozen active duty and reserve troops at Camp Shelby in Mississippi were taught that the American Family Association, a credible Christian ministry, was a domestic hate group. I was on their email list for a long time. Now, I understand, yes, they're yoked up with the 501c3, and, but a lot of times they have good things they're trying to, you know, implement here to fight and stem the tide of evil. <laughs> they're saying the American Family Association is a uh, domestic hate group. Meanwhile, I can't say a word about the the Muslims. So let's go ahead. I'm going to play this clip. Meanwhile, an American soldier fighting for faith after an army briefing slaps a hate group label on a well-established traditional Christian ministry. That's right. The presentation linked the American Family Association to hate groups such as the Ku Klux Klan, neo-Nazis, Black Panthers, and the Nation of Islam. The soldier was so enraged, the fearful... Punishment for his own Christian values. He reached out to our own uh, Todd Starnes. Hey, Todd. Hey, good morning, guys. Morning. Yeah, this happened out at Camp Shelby in Mississippi. Now, notice, these are all like Fox News reports. I mean, these aren't like, you know, I'm not playing a clip from like David Icke or something. You know, these are things they're admitting to, and I think they're trying to gauge public reaction, public outcry. Because, as I've said before, the Illuminati always telegraphs their punches, and they want to gauge public outcry. A lot of these things are beta tests, like the EBT food card in, in, uh, thing that happened recently. Now they're going to try another beta test with decreasing the EBT card benefits by some to see, gauge public reaction, see if there's going to be riots in the streets. They're wanting to get this martial law on the road, and they're seeing what is the right recipe to do that. And, and here we have another thing to see, okay, what is the Christian's reaction going to be. And the soldier was a part of uh, 50 uh, active duty and reservist troops that uh, had to attend this mandatory session. And in this session, they certainly did label the American Family Association, which is a well-respected Christian ministry, as a as, a, as an example of a hate group. And the soldier snapped a photograph that he sent me showing the, the slideshow presentation that uh, made that allegation. And... and you know, a later on. So he has proof of this. It's a slideshow. <laughs> they got this in PowerPoint. American Family Group, hate group, domestic hate group. <laughs> in your story we were reading, the reason the Army had for designating that group a hate group was because they opposed gay marriage. That's right. The, uh, and this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, back in April, uh, I had several stories, and we had reports from around the country of, of similar uh, sessions where this group and the Family Research Council were labeled uh, hate groups, domestic hate groups. Mm-hmm. And also another uh, briefing, and I believe this was uh, in the Air Force, labeled Evangelical Christianity and Catholicism as examples of religious extremism. So uh, there is something going on here. The Pentagon, we tried to talk to them. They told us we needed to talk to the Army. And at that point, the Army, uh, well, it's been almost 24 hours and we still haven't heard back from them. Mm -hmm. Um, A U.S. soldier um, in our Army spoke out. He said this. I had to show Americans what our soldiers are now being taught. I couldn't just let this one pass. I was completely taken back by this blatant attack, not only on, on the AFA, but Christians in our beliefs. Your thoughts on that? Elizabeth, uh, for the past five years under the Obama administration, we have seen a significant increase in anti-Christian rhetoric and activity in the in the military. We know that this is coming from civilian lawyers at the Pentagon, and many of the troops are, are very, very nervous about their careers. We've talked to so many soldiers who say they're going to be getting out of the military as a result of this anti-Christian activity that seems to be directed specifically at Christians. But here's what I find interesting, guys. N- not in any of these materials. Do we see anything about Islam? 
It's it's always about evangelical Christians or Catholics. Labeled as radical and extreme. That's right. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, Right from the horse's mouth, straight from Fox News, they're doing a better job actually exposing this than I think the typical... I, I, I would almost guarantee you Smiley Joel Osteen probably said nary a word about this in his Sunday um, sermonette today that he gave, or the other 501c3 pastors. Hopefully some of them did. But again, when you're yoked up with the IRS and the government and that entity gave you your right to exist and you are supposed to abide by their guidelines as to what you can and cannot say, then you have to watch your mouth. Because you don't want to lose that 501c3 status. You're going to lose government subsidies. You're going to lose the ability for your uh, parishioners to be able to write off their tithes and offerings on their IRS um, uh, tax returns. And all of that goes to basically the World Bank and the Vatican and basically Satan, everything you pay into the IRS. does It does not go to run in our country. I mean, Ronald Reagan found that out. When he right when he got into office, when he he had the Grace Commission do their analysis, and he said not one dime of what you pay into the Internal Revenue Service goes to running anything about this. And I've given you the quotes before, and it's just as true today as it ever was. You know that does not go to running this country. You've got all kind of other taxes that we pay that do that: gas taxes for the roads, and property taxes, and sales taxes, and these types. We're taxed you know, uh, so many different ways and we're not even aware we're being taxed. So, um, you want to know more about the corruption of the IRS. Uh, Key and Aaron Russo, freedom to fascism, he's dead now. Uh, happened to get bladder cancer and die um, after he produced that, and I believe that was probably by design, because they have that ability. And uh, Aaron Russo, freedom to fascism, is a good one. Good overall general viewpoint of the true facts about the IRS and how wicked and evil and corrupt. And hey, guess who's in charge of Obamacare? The IRS. And they've got their thousands upon thousands upon thousands of new agents they've hired in order to police it. Who better to police Obamacare than Satan? So you got Satan policing a satanic thing. Hey, it's a match made in hell and... You know, that's that's all by design. So, let's go further. The 2001 documentary film, 9-11, The Road to Tyranny, featured footage from a FEMA symposium given to firefighters and other emergency personnel in Kansas City in which it was stated that the Founding Fathers, Christians, and homeschoolers were terrorists and should be treated with the utmost suspicion and brutality in times of national emergency. So, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, a Department of Defense manual that was leaked in August revealed how the DOD was teaching that the Founding Fathers were extremists and would not have been welcome in today's military. A 2011 study funded by the Department of Homeland Security also characterized Americans who are, quote, suspicious of centralized federal authority and are, quote, reverent of individual liberty as extreme right-wing terrorists. Okay? So again, calling evil good and good evil is just the new normal now in Satan's brave new world. The recent firing of top military commanders, Navy Vice Admiral Tim Giardina and Major General Michael Carey, which I covered in the last teaching, has increased speculation that there are some very peculiar things happening within the U.S. military. Earlier this week, Former Navy SEAL Ben Smith warned that the Obama administration is asking top brass in the military if they would be comfortable with disarming U.S. citizens, which is a litmus test that includes gauging whether they would be prepared to order non-commissioned officers to fire on Americans. And again, it's this big weeding out process, this big gauging where they're at process by the Illuminati um, that controls our government. Uh, which Satan controls them and the fallen angels, essentially, to see where they're at, you know, in the whole progression of bringing in the New World Order. Um, So, this is just one thing after another. Now, here we're going to go to the next report, which is very much related to this. Um, 
This is a leaked video. FEMA is preparing military police for gun confiscations and martial law. The video shot in September of 2013 shows an army commander briefing the MPs on their new um, command structure under Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA. So now, when things go south, when martial law is declared, the Army will be under the Federal Emergency Management Agency. So they're going to be under totally under Satan's control, and um, they're going to be under uh, FEMA and Department of Homeland Security for domestic operations with the National Guard. So that's who's going to be their commanders. The MP began recording this exchange after being shocked to hear that they were now under FEMA control. In this video, you can clearly hear the commander discuss the suspension of the Constitution for martial law and gun confiscations in America. In essence, the military police is to provide security for FEMA while the agency confiscates our guns during a government-declared domestic crisis. And um, there... When you listen to the video, I'm not going to play it because you, you really need to hear it for yourself. Because there's you're hearing one voice lower, you're hearing one voice higher. It would not record very well. But if you listen it to yourself, I'll give you the link here. Um, but you're seeing that they're saying things like, you know, well, I think it's blank, blankety blank, that we confiscate guns. They're saying this to the FEMA guys, and and that's another thing. You kind of, I warn you, there's some cussing involved in the video, and they're like, "Well, we," he says, "I'm not going to do that." He says, "Oh no, no, we'll we'll do that." In other words, the military police or the MPs would be like the security force that will, would protect FEMA. FEMA's going to go in and be the ones confiscating the guns because I think they know that our armed services are going to be reluctant unless they've been actually groomed for that special divisions or whatever that have been groomed for that and hand-picked, they, they would have no problem. And again, this is why I think you can bring in the whole foreign troops thing, the Chinese troops, the Russian troops that we've talked a lot about, because they would have no no problem doing any of that. They would be more than happy. So, um, <clears throat> so just to repeat the last sentence, in essence, the military police is going to provide security for FEMA while the agency confiscates our guns during a government-declared domestic crisis. Uh, the commander said, they did that in Katrina, right? Meaning they confiscated guns. They just go on and take away people's guns. This is yet another piece of the larger platform pattern of demonization of gun owners, libertarians, conservatives, Christians, and anyone who will not bow down to the enslavement by the hijacked government occupied by ruthless tyrants who desire only total control. We've already seen gun confiscation in the wake of Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Now, I'm going to play this this clip here. I think it's about seven minutes. And uh, it totally goes over that this already happened once. And again, this was a beta test. But this has happened, and this is the absolute total pattern for what they want to implement nationwide. No one. Now, this is entitled, The NRA, The Untold Story of Gun Confiscation After Katrina. The first guy you're hearing here is, I think, is the police chief of New Orleans talking. Uh, this is after Katrina. So, we'll go ahead and roll this. No one will be able to be armed. We're going to take all the so he said, no one will be able to be armed in New Orleans. Essentially, we will take all weapons. I mean, that is beyond total insanity. You've got a situation after Katrina where there was more looting and, and evil criminal behavior going on. And you have the audacity to say, and you got all the criminals with the guns, but you have the audacity to say you're going to come in and you are going to take the guns away from the law-abiding citizens, the ones that could actually help to restore law and order. No, we're going to take their guns specifically. We're going to let the criminals have their guns. We're going to let all the criminal behavior just go on like crazy. But the only ones we're going to be concerned about are the law-abiding citizens who could actually make a difference and who possess firearms legally, lawfully. And so this is, this is what, what ended up happening here. Um, let me just check my audio. I want to make sure that this is as high as possible. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the rest of this. We'll be able to be armed. We're going to take all weapons. It was a human drama with emotions and tensions running high. 
Patty Connie is still trying to recover physically and emotionally. They really did a number on me. From the day police forced her from her home. It was traumatic. All of a sudden, they were banging on the front door, the side door, and the back door. And they said, let us in. Okay, so this is Patty Coney. She was a victim of this gun confiscation. They were going door to door doing this. Okay, and here's a lady, <laughs> an elderly lady in her house, not bothering anybody. And this is what happened to her. Patty tried to explain. She was on dry land. She had plenty of food and water and didn't want to abandon her dogs. But it didn't matter. If you see six or eight police that look like linebackers pushing you in a corner, you're, you're in shock. I'd say, look at all my food. I got plenty of food. They kept pushing me back, pushing me back, and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. Now, you're watching her being tackled in the video. You're literally watching. There was a camera crew in there. And, you, and, and the guy just shoves her against the wall. I mean, this is an elderly lady. You could kill her doing this. I mean, an elderly lady, they can die from just falling down. They break their hips. Have to my grandma. And sometimes that's life-threatening. He slams her into the wall and then brings her down to the ground. She didn't point the gun at him or anything. And, and this is what's going on here. You actually can watch the video. I said, it's not even loaded. It's and not even loaded. It on the floor. Well, they punched me in the face. Look at my black and blue marks. Look at, look at what they did to me. They dragged me out of here. I really thought they were going to kill me. I really did. We were coming back. It, 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 again, as hard as they hit her, she is very fortunate to be alive. She must have some tough bones. Because, and a lot of women at that age do not have tough bones. They've got osteoporosis, and you literally can break their back very, very easily. Okay, I've seen in the chiropractic that happening, where where chiropractors would adjust some uh, elderly woman manually in the mid back and break all of her ribs. It didn't kill her, but I mean, it was bad. And so you got to be, that's why I was always very, very cautious. I had a, a late, women in particular, over the age of 30, they're not, they don't have enough magnesium, boron, um, and things like this. Calcium is, is one of the factors, but there's other factors that are more, almost even more important for bone density. And I mean, you got to be real careful. They're, they're slamming this elderly lady because it could have killed her very easily. Across the lake is when we got stopped by a coast guard. And okay, here's a guy, Wayne Shrum, victim of gun confiscation. He, they, these are all different stories from that very time period. St. Tammany Sheriff's Department and the National Guard by gunpoint. We had identification. We were coming back from a house that we were taking the weapons out of so criminals wouldn't break in and steal them. And we've had uh, policemen tell us that that's what they wanted us to do but not the sheriff in St. Tammany. They just wanted to confiscate them from us. We felt like criminals at the time when they come up to us with M16s or AR-15s, whatever it was, but there were four of them with rifles and holding on us with our hands in the air until they got in our boat. So they got on the boat and they asked us, do you have any loaded weapons? Yes, we do. They're in the two back compartments. Wayne went to show them where the gun was. And he screams, don't touch it. Don't even move. I'll get it. I thought it felt like it was un-American and then we had been violated when they, you know, took... <laughs> like I say, we were shells out. We were stood there sitting around looking at each other and said, we just got our guns taken away from them. They took them. And they didn't have a, a right to take them. They didn't have a reason to take them. That was the thing. We did nothing wrong. But they took them anyway. He said, be thankful we're taking your guns here. Why should I be thankful? Well, if they catch you with them on land, they're going to take you straight to jail. We live in proof that all they have to do is say, look, this is the law. You had that feeling that you were violated. You, they took something from you. They stole something from you. That's the only way to put it. They took something that they didn't have a right to take. Why don't you come and get my gun for? I'm a good citizen. 
Marie Galatis, a Baptist minister, faced the same story in her neighborhood. The same threats by thugs, the same lack of police, but she never once felt afraid. And I had my Bible, and I had my gun, and I knew I was safe. And I tell you what, I'm an Annie Oakley if you come forward with me or my family. I'm going to let you have it, buddy. Marie knows she was lucky. She was never forced to leave home and didn't have her firearm confiscated. It's going against my, my constitutional rights as a citizen. But Marie remembers how upset she got when the police department threatened to take her firearm. You're letting the thugs get away with everything, and you're coming to honest, good citizens and taking away their protection, and it is wrong, wrong, wrong. What I feel is that we're losing control of who we are as a nation. Robert Zoss was forced to evacuate when a tree destroyed both of his family's homes. Loaded with dogs, kids, people. Then, as they were exiting through downtown, the unexpected happened. These cops came out of nowhere, said stop, and asked, uh, do we have weapons in the car? And I told him, yeah, I do. He said, get out the vehicle. Had us all sit cross-legged in front while they searched the vehicle. I had a 22 long rifle. My uh, tenant's girlfriend had a 22 pearl handle revolver given to her by her grandmother or grandfather. But Robert couldn't believe what he watched police do next to his rifle and his friend's pearl handle revolver. I saw them smash her gun given to her by grandmother or grandfather just against the curb. The other things that they busted up, the 22 rifle they busted up, these were police officers that went too far. We didn't have any rights. I mean, they treated us like criminals. They treated us like if we were in a third world country. I was scared because these guys weren't doing it by the book. There was mayhem. Uh, New Orleans police did not have control of the city anymore. So the only plan they thought, I guess, was to take the guns away from the people. Heed the warning of what this was. You know, this is like Australia. All of a sudden, boom, they got our rights. So they were literally smashing their guns. They were destroying them right there. And like he said, yeah, I guess this is a good uh, approach. You know, take all the law-abiding citizens' guns and then really let the criminals loose and let them do whatever they want. It's a great plan. I mean, it's a a good plan, Um, solid, well thought out. Uh, New Orleans is one of the most wicked places on the planet. It is literally the voodoo capital. And you could make a case for all-around witchcraft capital per capita, of the United States. Okay, I mean, I know Miami is really bad, but New Orleans is really old, old evil, old voodoo. I mean, the the, the homosexual population, everything, so many wicked, evil things go on. And so this would be a good place to to test it. There was a gang documentary I had watched not too long ago where the gangs there, this one in particular, that were named after their apartment complexes they lived in, were so ruthless that other gangs didn't even, like the Bloods and the Crips, didn't even try to come in and, and, and do anything there, because they couldn't. They were more ruthless than even the other ruthless gangs out there. That's how bad New Orleans is. And so this would be a great place to, to beta test something like this. Um, so I guess it really shouldn't surprise us in that regard. Okay, this is a Browning 270. It's my deer rifle. And this is a Savage 7mm 08. This belongs to my grandson. And this was the two rifles that they confiscated. We left about 6 o'clock in the morning. We started across Lake Ponce train. As we came out <clears throat> under the... Dr- this is Buell Teal, another victim of gun confiscation during this time. Drawbridge, uh, a St. Tammy Parish sheriff's boat run up with the lights flashing told us to pull over so we pulled over and they, they pulled in about 20 foot from us and they had five guys in the boat and they had uh, assault weapons and they uh, pointed them at us and asked if we had any weapons on board I told them yes we had two weapons they said get at the back of the boat with your hands in the air we're coming aboard to search they got the guns, they opened the case and looked at them. I was standing at the back of the boat with my hands in the air. Automatic rifles pointed at you. I mean, you don't have any uh, 
choice. I mean, they didn't just have them pointed from their hip. They had them up at their shoulder pointed, you know. I mean, they weren't playing. They asked where we were going. Told them we were contractors for Pala Interstate. We were going to New Orleans to find a route to come in with a barge. So they said, okay, we're seizing these weapons. So I said, I want a receipt for my guns. They said, no, <clears throat> we're not giving receipts. I said, if we give receipts, we'd be out here all day writing receipts for all the weapons we've confiscated. It made me angry when they told me to go get a lawyer if I wanted my guns back. That's when I really got angry. They didn't care what your rights were. They were going to deny them. It's not America as we've known it before. It's changing. And this was during Katrina, which was years ago. So, again, another big beta test there, and they were seeing what they could get away with, what kind of tyranny that they could, you know, use as the new normal. And, um, you know, gun confiscation, go get a lawyer, you know, you have no rights, everything's suspended. I mean, it's, it's unreal. So going back to the main article, we read, The hijacked federal government has been meticulously preparing for martial law at a breakneck speed. Last year, a leaked U.S. Army manual entitled FM 3-39.40, Internment and Resettlement Operations. There's a link to that in this PDF for uh, um, October 27, 2013. All the PDFs are always free up online. The audios are all free at contendingfortruth.com. Um, the, it outlined the responsibilities of the Army PSYOPs officers to indoctrinate political activists into having appreciation of U.S. policies while they are detained at detention camps within America. Um, again, the whole prison camp thing. Then, going further, another training manual demonized Americans who embrace individual liberties as potential extremists and even referred to the Founding Fathers as an example of extremists in history. Uh, the U.S. Army Civil Disturbance Operation Manual from 2006 broke down how military assets on the U.S. soil will be used to confiscate firearms, put down riots, and even kill Americans. <laughs> you know, it's all been stated. The manual listed weapons to be used against American dissidents, including anti-riot grenades, and emphasized that warning shots will not be fired. No, they're just going to take a headshot on you. You know, but if you're a Christian, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, and I'm not, and I'm also here to tell you that God can protect you no matter how bleak the um, outcome may look. And we're going to get into that into some Bible verses because I, I want to always keep balance here. I don't want to just emphasize negative, oh, they're coming to get us, oh, woe is us, we're all going to die. No, that's not my mindset at all. Um, but... I'm kind of here to, to try to bring biblical balance to the subject. The, um, going further, earlier this year, Law Enforcement Targets, Inc., a provider of shooting targets for the Department of Homeland Security, the ones that are coming to take the guns, self-admitted now, and other federal agencies sold a line of realistic-looking, non-traditional targets of pregnant women, children, and elderly people to these, um, the DHS and other law enforcement so that... Um, they'll have no hesitation shooting them. The one target in particular depicted a pregnant woman standing inside a nursery, like where you have your baby and your bassinet. And these targets are designed to condition law enforcement officers into shooting these American threats without hesitation. So this is what they're gearing up for. This isn't my opinion. This is what they're openly doing here. It's all verifiable. I, I even posted the pictures of the targets in a previous PDF so you could literally see what these targets look like. I mean, this is so sick. This is demented, what is going on. This is so unbelievably satanic. In addition to buying shooting targets of Americans, DHS also bought 2 billion rounds of ammunition for domestic operations last year. This excessive amount, enough to sustain the war in Iraq for 24 years, will ensure the rapid expansion of the police state during the civil chaos 
caused by the likely economic collapse of America or other factors. We've already seen a similar paramilitary takeover after the Boston bombings, when armored police went door-to-door to enter and search homes without a warrant. Again, it's all conditioning and beta testing. The hijacked federal government is simply shedding our constitutional republic and purging what remains of our liberties while demonizing anyone who stands in their way. Yes, unfortunately, that is exactly uh, what they're doing there. So, I'm going to go ahead and end part one here. And we're going to go to part two, look at some Bible verses regarding giving some balance to this subject. And then we'll go proceed further into the study. So, God bless you. And we'll see you in part two.